Hey guys, it's Bang for PC Gamer here. I just wanted to share with you a test I did to find my graphics card's maximum temperature. Now, I kind of use these softwares when I'm overclocking, and obviously, when you're overclocking, you like to keep an eye on your GPU temperature as you don't want it getting too hot because that does generally lead to instability and can cause damage. Now, most people would use a piece of software like Firmark which is well known for stressing out your cards and finding your max temperatures many review sites use it and Antec for one I definitely know uses it to find their maximum temperatures for their GPU reviews but it has been put to me that nowadays finding your maximum temperature with Firmark isn't always the best uh, software to use sometimes running a very intensive game with a high GPU load and a high VRAM load may bring out a higher temperature or may stress the card even more and I wanted to put this to the test so with this test I'm going to be using Crisis Free which we can all agree is a very demanding game I'm also going to be running that at maximum settings at 1920 by 1080 I'm going to be using Far Cry 4 also a very demanding game once you push the AA limits to eight times. I'm going to be doing that as well. I'll be using Unigine Valley 1.0 at its maximum settings at 1920 by 1080. And last, I'll be using Firmark. And I want to see between all of these games and software what actually pushes the card to its maximum thermal limit. And if there's any truth in running a more demanding game when using it against Fermark to see if you can find your maximum thermal limit. So I'm going to start off with Crisis Free here. I'm just going to show you the settings. For the test I'm going to do a 10 minute run for all the games and all the software. Obviously for the purpose of this video I'm going to speed it up. But I will leave a timer visible so you can see the time lapse. And after that we can observe um, what was the highest temperature from throughout all the tests and find out if uh, Fermark really just isn't the best way of testing your GPU temperature anymore. So there's the first test complete. As you can see the GTX 980 pretty much reached an equilibrium of 75 Celsius. And um, 
sorry if that made you a little bit dizzy but I'm sure you didn't really want to sit here for 10 minutes just through one stage of uh, of the test so it had to be done now moving on to Far Cry 4 So the GTX 980 reaching 75 Celsius again. So that's it for the games. I'm going to try running a synthetic benchmark like Unigine Valley and see if that pushes the card even further than the games do.
So even with a synthetic benchmark like Unigine Valley, still allows the GTX 980 to reach a equilibrium of 75 degrees Celsius. So you're going to see a bit of a trend here now. 75 degrees seems to be where the GTX 980 is maxing out. So the last thing to do is try Firmark and see if it can push it any further. In theory, this should stress the GPU a lot, a lot more than the games and the applications I've been using earlier in this test. But there's only one way to find that, and let's see if the GTX 980 can keep a respectable temperature even under such a heavy. So that's the Fermat test complete at 1920 by 1080 with 8 times AA. As you can see the maximum temperature was 75 degrees Celsius once again, even with Fermat's heavy load. Um, this GTX 980 is just topping out at 75 degrees which seems to be about as far as any application in a real world really is going to push it. Even a synthetic test like Fermat can't get it to go any higher than that. As you can see it used a total of 99.2% of its TDP power consumption so and the GPU was also at 99% load so as you can see it was fully stressed and uh, these are the results so basically Fermark still stresses your GPU just as much as um, the latest games so it's still a program that you can continue to use to find out what your max uh, GPU temperature is so that's pretty much it guys thanks for watching